Hey, well, you've clicked on this video because you want to know how to get into God's presence. Well, I want to just say that there are six really easy steps you can follow to get into God's presence. It's been true in my life, and I've taught this to thousands of people who have found it incredibly uh, life-giving. But I want to say this. If you're someone who hasn't um, received the Lord Jesus as your Savior, then you need to pause this video and you need to click on the link where you'll see how do I encounter the living God through Jesus Christ because that's the most important step that can happen before you can be in God's presence um, on on a regular basis. So, uh, if you're still with me, that means you've made a decision to receive the Lord Jesus as your Savior. That's great. So, let's go into it. Now, I want to also say straight up that this is not a magic formula. There is no magic to this at all. Um, as I said, this is just something that has been incredibly life-giving for me, and I've taught this to thousands of people who have also found it life-giving. It's because we struggle to be in God's presence. And remember, God's with us always. So if God's with us always, even unto the end of the age, why is it that we struggle to feel, know, and sense God's presence? Well, the solar scriptura folks would want to, you know, quickly pull out the Bible and give us a good whack around the head on this one because they would say, well, God is with us in the scriptures. And I agree with them. God is with us in the scriptures. And uh, we can certainly um, build faith and we can uh, be um, in God's word um, as a way of knowing God. Um, prayer is another way um, that we can God's presence, and this this technique will pick up on that. Um, probably the third way I've known, and uh, my wife is a great practitioner of this, is worship. You know, when we worship God, um, we can just we get lost in God's presence. So some of you might have experienced that in church when you've been worshiping God. Uh, but this is something we can do uh, every day, every morning, every evening, whenever we feel the need. I know last night um, I was really, really anxious, and uh, I just was having trouble sleeping. I was I was unsettled, and I just dropped into my practice of God's presence and sure enough uh, slept like a baby uh, but before that I, I just was so warmed by God's presence so uh, here's the thing is that we don't convince God to join us God is already with us this is really about understanding that we get in the way um, our anxiety our fears our doubts our depressions um, our our uh, troubles, um, our, our pain, all these things can can uh, really make seeing, knowing and feeling God's presence so very difficult. So this technique is about getting out of ourselves way um, and being in God's presence. So I would also want to say that this is not meditation um, and this is not some sort of contemplative spirituality. Um, this is, is not mindfulness. Now, don't get me wrong, all those things have value um, and I'm not speaking against them. I simply want to say that this is not about emptying yourself. This is about being filled with God's presence. And this is a very different concept because while um, contemplative spirituality, while meditation, while mindfulness can certainly help us with anxiety, uh, can certainly help us with managing pain uh, and helping us with relaxation, um, this is not uh, about any of those things. And ironically, those things are the gift of God in these moments. We, we do get all those things, I find, by being in God's presence. But this is about emptying ourselves so as to be filled with God's Spirit. And that's a, that's a very clear distinction for me uh, in this journey and in this process. So these techniques are all about achieving that, being emptied of uh, the junk that stops us from knowing and, and feeling God's presence and then allowing us to be filled with God's Spirit because this is something that needs to happen every day. Um, you know, I know that, again, you know, some people would want to argue that once we receive Jesus, we're filled with the Spirit, and that's it, full stop, end of story. Uh, now, I do believe that when we receive Jesus, we're filled with the Spirit, but we, we are invited by the Scriptures to be ongoing, filled with God's Spirit uh, every day. And um, I like to think that, you know, as Paul said, um, you know, we need to be pressed down, shaken, running out all over with God's presence. Uh, we're also leaky buckets. And so, uh, you know, when we fill with the Spirit, we leak out the bottom and out the sides and also over the top. Uh, and so I just think that we need to be people that are filled constantly. So that's what this is all about as well. Um, all right, so let's get into it. Um, step one is, is usually uh, almost always this step. Uh, and it's um, giving thanks and praise to the living God for who God is, uh, all that he's done. He's the Alpha, he's the Omega, he's the beginning and the end. Uh, you know, before you and I were, he was, uh, you know, uh, praise to Jesus who was the Word made flesh. Praise to Jesus who was in the beginning before all things. You know, uh, the one who separated light from darkness. You know, on and on and on we can go. There are so many reasons to exalt God for his character, 
uh, for his love, for his kindness, for his glory, for his goodness, for his faithfulness. And, uh, you know, I always say that this needs to be the most important part of this whole journey is to place God exactly where he belongs on the throne of our lives, you know, replacing him as um, king. We, we pick up idols along the way all the time. We don't even know we're doing it half the time. But when we take time to praise and honor God, we place God back where he belongs in our lives and that's on the throne. Um, once we've uh, been through that step, um, look, and I, I say this because sometimes the, the steps aren't hard fast, but, but I put them in this order and then I'll talk about how they can be interchanged. But if you're really, really troubled in your heart and soul and you just know that, um, you know, there's sin in your life that you've just got to get out, you know, you can do the step two of repentance at this point where you can just acknowledge before God your, your sin, your failings, the things you know that you've done so terribly wrong. Um, but I, if, if, if not desperately urgent, hang on to it for now because I think the next step um, is about thanks giving you know, we've praised and exalted God, put him on the throne. Now we thank him. And this is a, is a more personalization. We, we thank uh, God for his provision in our lives. And we can be really specific here if we want, thanking him for the clothes on our back, the food in our bellies, the roof over our head. Thank you for our family, for our friends. Thank you for our pets, if you want. Um, but being thankful that he is our God, thankful. And, and, you know, I taught my kids growing up that a thankful heart's a happy heart. And, and I think that thankfulness and gratitude is an incredibly important step here. So taking time to be thankful and don't stop at just one or two things. Dig deep for what you can be thankful to God for. And, and here's a bit of a controversial one. Be thankful for things that haven't been provided yet. You know, that bill that you've got to pay. Lord, I thank you that you know my need. I thank you that you're going to provide. I thank you that I'm going to pay that bill. You know, even things that are going wrong. Lord, I, I thank you that my health is, is not where it is right now. You know, not because I want to be unwell, but because I know you are with me in my, my, my illness. I know you are with me in my struggle. There are so many reasons we can turn what can be a negative or a self-indulgence into um, praise of the living God. Now, certainly here is a great time if you want to be repentant of things. And, and this is a really important step uh, when we want to be in God's presence is to acknowledge that we fall short. Now, I want to be clear. This is not because we're begging God <laughs> um, to come to us and we're sorry. You know, don't reject me because I'm so sorry. You know, this is, this is a really uh, dangerous place because, um, you know, the whole mea culpa whipping yourself in the back thing. The reason why that's such a deception uh, is because we're making it about us. And we've got to understand that repentance is about us acknowledging that has been done for us on the cross so repentance is not um lord get away from me you know i'm a terrible person you know like like um i think it was peter who prayed that um you know jesus rebuked him for that you know that the reality is, is is this is about simply acknowledging that we've fallen short of the glory of god so repenting of your sin you know um confessing you know lord I, i've really stuffed up this week um you know i did this and i did that i failed to do this i thought this in my heart i did that you know that that's repentance but but remember this is not a, a beat yourself around the head thing because that's actually make that about you and that takes you out of god's presence this is about simply confessing and then accepting what's been done for you on the cross. And, and Lord, I thank you that you've forgiven me for what I've done. I praise you. Um, Lord, now strengthen me to not return to this. And this is important. Um, Lord, I do not want to return to this sin. Um, Father, set me free, you know, because sin enslaves us. We literally become slaves, particularly if we have sin that is constantly part of our lives, uh, that keeps coming back, you know. Lord, set me free from slavery to the sin. Um, okay, so once we're through that step, uh, the next step is going to be all about, um, Lord, speak to me now. I'm listening. And we need to still our minds at this point and try to be uh, as still as we can be to let God speak. And sometimes God will come to us as impressions. Maybe we'll get an image in our minds. Maybe he'll put a word of scripture on our hearts. If you don't know the Bible very well, then maybe he'll simply put a book on your heart to read, you know, a book of the Bible to read. Uh, maybe he'll put a person in his name in front of you to go and talk to, um, you know, whatever it might be. But if we're not still enough and listening, then he won't do that. And we need to hold that place as long as we feel like we can to just be listening and stilling our minds to hear. Uh, once we've come through um, that step, the next step is to um, be saying, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come upon me, fill my life. Now, this is interchangeable, I should have said, with the last step, which is the stillness. You know, you can, you can start the stillness by saying, come, Holy Spirit, come. Lord Jesus, come. You know, Holy Spirit, fill me anew. Make me clean. Give me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit in me. Holy Spirit, um, grant me your gifts uh, of love, all, all the fruits of your spirit, of kindness, of self-control, of goodness, faithfulness. Um, uh, 
uh, you know, all the rest. <laughs> I'm just going out of my head as I said that. Uh, you can find them uh, in uh, Galatians. Uh, so all those fruits of the Spirit. Right, now we're at almost at the end. At this point, we just want to um, be asking for the things that we need God to do in our lives. You know, Lord, I really need um, help with my finances. Lord, I really need, um, I've got so-and-so is not well. Lord, heal them. Um, you know, this is our petitions. We, we bring them before God. Um, and uh, at the end of our petitions, the things that we need uh, for ourselves and for others. And this is important. You can pray for yourself. You know, it's false piety to actually say, oh, no, I only pray for others. You know, that's just, just junk. You know, the truth is you're meant to do both. Um, you know, don't get sucked into false piety. It's, it's not of God. Um, when you finish that stage, um, then really you want to finish with praise and thanksgiving. And Lord, thank you for this time we've had together. All right, now I've rushed that a little bit, uh, but it's still been 10 minutes. I should have said that when, right at the start, um, we need to hold an open position. Now you can be lying down, you can be standing up, you can be sitting, it doesn't matter, but you do need to have a relaxed body. Um, and I, I like to have my hands in an open position, and, and that's not magic. I just find this, this the position of openness towards God that really helps me. Um, and I often feel God like coming down upon me uh, when I'm in this place. And so my openness, you know, I get this real, really powerful, sense of God filling up my hands and filling up my heart and filling up my mind. All right. Oh, I just don't feel like I've done this very good justice, but, but that's the explanation. Um, I'm actually going to do this Sunday alive, uh, being God's presence as part of not quite the church. Uh, so if you'd like to join me for that, to practice it, um, I'm going to talk you through that. And we'll do that together. All right. I better shut up now. Okay. Bless you. Have a great day. See ya.